Hello students, today we are going to discuss about the reorganization of Notice India with a special focus on the creation of Nagaland state. In this topic, I shall be discussing on the brief historical background of Notice India, that is how Notice India was governed during the British rule and subsequently after independence how Notice India was governed under the Indian Union and later on the emergence of Nagaland as the 16th state of Indian Union. As you must be aware of the fact that emerging uh, Northeast region of India is often called Seven Sister comprising of the state of Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram and Tipura. However, after joining Sikkim into the Indian Union in 1975, Sikkim was also included as the part of Northeast India. And you know that Northeast India is very strategically placed. It has international boundaries with China, Bhutan, Bangladesh and Myanmar. And it is connected with the rest of India only through narrow Siliguri corridor or popularly known as Sikkim Nag, which is just 20, 22 kilometers wide. Notice India during the British rule. Before we deal with the state formations, let me briefly throw light on the nature of political arrangement that the British had made in the Notice India. There are two dominant political arrangements in the Notice India during the British rule. The first one is known as the British India province of which Assam was one of the British India province and secondly there are princely states like Manipur, Tripura and Kasi states. You know that in accordance with this political arrangement the nature of relationship between the British and to these political entities are different. For example the Assam as the province of British India is directly governed by the British uh, Parliament and the laws enacted by the British Parliament are applicable in the provinces of British India, whereas the law formulated by the British Parliament are not directly applicable over the princely states like Manipur and Tipura. The relationship between the princely state and the British India is usually described as the paramountcy. So over the princely state, British had pursued a policy of indirect rule, leaving much internal autonomy to the kings and princes of the princely state. And there are large tracts of hill areas popularly called tribal areas of Assam, which comprises of northeastern frontier tracts, Naga Hills, Lusai Hills, Garo Hills and the United Kasi and Jante Hills. In order to govern these areas, British formulated a regulation popularly known as Bengal Eastern Frontier Regulation Act 1873. Under this regulation, an inner line regulations were enforced in the tribal areas of Assam and there were much autonomy in terms of administrations uh, of these tribal areas. And later on, subsequent to the recommendation of the Simon Commission, the Government of India Act 1935 passed excluded and partially excluded areas. Some of the least backward areas like Northeastern Frontier Tracks, Naga Hills, Mizo Hills, North Kasar Hill districts were kept under the category of excluded areas and some of the more developed tribal areas like Garo Hills and the Kasi and Jantia Hills were kept under the category of partially excluded areas. And distinctions between the partially excluded and the excluded area is that in the partially excluded areas reforms are partially implemented and over the excluded areas, political reforms were to be excluded. Nor is reorganization after independence. As we have just discussed, there were lots of autonomy given to the tribal areas of Assam by the excluded and the partially excluded 
areas regulation provided by the Government of India Act 1935 as well as the Bengal Frontier Regulation Act of 1873. Next, we are going to discuss on notice reorganization after independence. After India achieved independence from the British colonial rule, the Constituent Assembly of India constituted a subcommittee under the leadership of Gopinath Bordoloi, a prominent Congress leader from the province of Assam, to recommend or to suggest as to how the tribal areas of Northeast India should be given what kind of autonomy and what sort of administrative arrangement should be imposed over the tribal areas of the northeastern region of India. On the basis of recommendation of the Bordeloi subcommittee, the Constituent Assembly of India inserted six schedule within the Constitution of India and we all know that this six schedule to the Constitution of India deals with the administrative and social political autonomy of the tribal areas of Assam. Under the provisions of the Sixth Schedule, a district councils and regional councils were to be set up in all the hill districts of Assam and special autonomy of a certain subject concerning the hill areas should be given to the district council as well as the regional council. However, the provision of district council fail to satisfy the political aspirations of the tribal leaders and this was evidence when most of the tribal leaders expressed their views when Simon Commission extensively to the entire hill areas of northeastern regions of India. The basic objective of the Sixth Schedule is to provide limited autonomy to the tribal body and this limited autonomy did not however satisfy the political aspiration of the emerging political class of the hills areas of Assam. In fact, the Naga Hill district did not accept the provision of the sixth schedule and the district council was never formed here. The Nagas followed the part of violence and insurgency and section of them even wanted independence from India. Now, we are going to discuss about the formation of state of Nagaland. Emergence of states such as Nagaland, Meghalaya, Manipur, Mizoram, etc. are the outcome of long-drawn political movements informed by desire for more autonomy. In fact, this desire for more political autonomy among the tribal people of Assam was visible in the view expressed by the tribal leaders to the Simon Commission of India. When Simon Commission extensively toured hill areas of northeast Almost all the hill districts submitted their various demands. Most of the tribal leaders expressed the view that Assam legislature should have no power to legislate upon the subject concerning their district. The sixth schedule, on the contrary, provided a limited autonomy. The provision of the sixth schedule did not satisfy the political class of hill district of Assam. This led to the movement for more autonomy in various parts of Northeast India after the independence of India. However, the trajectory of the movement can be classified into two categories. First, violence and insurgency method. This method was visible in the Naga Hills and the Luzai or Mizo Hills and democratic agitation. This was visible in the case of Manipur and Meghalaya. The Nagaland, which was inaugurated by the then President of India, Dr. S. Radhakrishnan, as the 16th State of Indian Union on the 1st December 1963, was the result of long-drawn violent insurgency movements of the Naga National Council. However, before the emergence of NNC as a strong political force in the Naga Hills, there was the Naga Club which was established in 1918. It was the first organization of its kind in Nagaland. The Naga Hill District Tribal Council was subsequently formed in 1945 on the nucleus of Naga Club. Later on, this Naga Hills District Tribal Council was transformed into a Naga National Council, a political party. Like in the Indian National Congress, there were 
moderates as well as extremists in the NNC too. And you must be aware of the fact that the Naga National Council initially was in favor of inclusion of Naga Hills in an autonomous Assam in a free India with local autonomy and duly safeguarded for the interests of the Nagas. Naga moderate initially control the NNC, but the leadership of the NNC went in the hands of Angami Japu Fizu, a prominent Naga leader, before India achieved independence. And under his, it was under his leadership that NNC started demanding for the right of self-determination for the Nagas. NNC initially was in favor of inclusion of Naga Hills in an autonomous Assam in a free India with local autonomy and duly safeguarded for the interests of Naga. Naga moderates initially controlled the NNC, but the leadership passed in the hands of Angami Japu Fizu, a prominent Naga leader just before independence of India. And it was under his leadership that the demands of right of self-determination for the Naga was voice. But in its resolutions of 10 February 1947, the NNC demanded self-determination for the Nagas. They asked for setting up an interim government for 10 years, at the end of which Nagas would be free to decide the form of government of their liking. Subsequently, Sir Akbar Haidari, the governor of Assam, signed an agreement with NNC on 26 June 1947, popularly known as Nine Point Agreements. However, there was controversy on the part of NNC and the government as to the interpretation of the Close Nine of the Agreements. Close Nine of the Agreements talks about 10 years periods of special responsibility of Governor of Assam as the agent of the Government of India to ensure due observance of the Nine Point Agreement. NNC, however, interpreted the last point to mean that they may have right to opt out of India after 10 years. The official interpretation was to mean more acceptable arrangement for the smooth functioning of autonomy. This resulted into the breakdown of Akbar Haidari agreements. And later on, NNC, uh, under the leadership of FISO, started a series of non-violent civil disobedience movements in the Naga Hills for self-determination of Nagas, such as non-participation by Nagas in the district council formation under the provision of the six schedules successful boycott of the 1952 general election, the first general elections conducted in the free India, and the conduct of plebiscite from May to August 1951, sending off series of delegations to Delhi to press for demand of sovereign Nagalands. Nonviolent agitation, however, gradually turned into violent modes and violent curse classes started taking place between the armed NNC volunteers and that of Assam police and the Nagaland police. The climate reached in 1956. In 1955, NNC started massive recruitment drive of young men in the armed underground rank. By 1955, NNC had mobilized around 5,000 army and the number gradually increased. In order to control the situation, army was calling in Naga Hills in 1956. At the same time, the Naga Hills disturbed areas ordinance and Assam maintenance of public orders were promulgated in Naga Hills. In between the class, it was the ordinary people who suffers the most. In order to resolve the Naga political impasse and solve its political problems, a series of steps were initiated by the Naga people and Naga civil society. Attempt to resolve the political impasse. In order to resolve the emerging violent class between Naga armed group and the Indian Army and to resolve the Naga political problems. A series of initiatives were taken up, the most important of which were the organization of Naga People's Convention. 
The first Naga People Conventions was convened from 22nd to 26th August 1957 and it demanded for the creation of single administrative unit comprising of Naga Hills District of Assam and Twen Sang Frontier Division of NEFA, that is Northeast Frontier Agency. The government of India considered the demand and the Naga Hills Twen Sang areas was created. In the next Serious attempts to pacify the situation in the Naga Hills was met by the Second and the Third Naga People Conventions. The Second Naga People's Conventions was held in Mokoksing in May 1958. A committee was constituted to formulate their demands. Subsequently, the drafting committee prepared a 16-point memorandum for the constitution of a separate state within the Indian unions. The third Naga People's Convention was also held in Makoksing from 22nd to 26 October 1959. It approved the draft of the 16-point memoranda. Subsequently, delegates of the People's Convention met Prime Minister in July 1960 and the Prime Minister of India accepted their demand in principles. Subsequently, the Parliament of India passed the Constitution 13th Amendment Act 1962 to provide for the creation of the state of Nagaland as a 16th state of the Indian Union. So students, this was the political process which suggests how the state of Nagaland as a 16th state of Indian Union was created. But what you should understand is that the formation of Nagaland as a, as a state of the Indian unions departs from the popular norms which was followed in the formation of state in elsewhere of India. You must be aware of the fact that State Reorganization Commission of India favor big state, not the smaller state like that of the Nagaland. At the same time, the basis of state reorganization was the linguistic, that is, state should be created on the basis of language. But in Nagaland, the state was created not on the basis of language, but on the basis of ethnics. And moreover, this state had an insurgent background which demands right of self-determination for the Naga areas. And the creation of Nagaland state has sent a wrong message to the entire the part of Northeast India is that the government of India only listens to the violence, not to the non-violence non agitation as taking part in different uh, regions of Northeast like Manipur, Meghalaya and Tripura. So the creation of Nagaland's left behind a trail of insurgency movement in the notice India and the arguments for economic viability of the smaller state was rejected and for today's uh, what I have just discussed is that uh, we just uh, discussed briefly about uh, how notice India was governed during the British rule and how uh, after independence how the tribal areas of notice uh, region of India was uh, administratively brought into the Indian unions and how six schedule was included within the uh, constitution of India to satisfy the political aspirations of the tribal peoples of Northeast India. But how the six provisions of the six schedule fails to fulfill the aspiration of the tribal leaders of the Northeast region of India and subsequently how the movement started and gradually the formation of the state of notice uh, state of Nagaland as a 16th state of the Indian Union. Thank you.